It was an unprecedented night. The outpost on XV-988 had received a message from a previously undiscovered species. The Premier in that sector didn't hide her annoyance, until she heard what that message contained, that is. It wasn't a proclamation of a new empire destined to rule the galaxy, nor another zealot warning everyone around to not dare approach them. This time was different. It was a present from a small distant world, representing our hope, determination and goodwill in a vast and marvellous universe, as it claimed. And this wasn't nearly all of it. Already all of those involved were sceptical. It seemed like a cruel trap, luring those naive enough to think an alien species may not want only to rule and subjugate others. The Premier decided that three lower class scientists should remain in the outpost main chamber and listen to the whole message. After all, if it was some kind of a trap, she didn't want to lose too many of her people. After three whole cycles, the scientists made clear that there was nothing sinister about the message. Moreover, they insisted that the Premier needed to see it herself. After the showing, she was speechless. The message was filled with greetings and images. Sounds of nearby stars symbolizing hellos from their region of the galaxy itself. Symphonies that she was captured entirely by. Her entourage's favorite one was about so-called imagination. Light clicks that echoed throughout the outpost, spiking everyone's interest. After a while, the showing room was filled completely with staff fascinated by the sounds. And most interestingly, they hoped to overcome the challenges of their times and join a community of galactic civilizations. And that was the only remotely bleak thing in the whole transmission. There wasn't a galactic community of friendly nations waiting for them. There was just a handful of bickering realms in a constant state of war. That is when the whole ordeal was reported to the higher-ups. Every significant worker of the outpost signed personally under a letter to the Viceroy himself to send a flotilla of warships and civilian ships to welcome those magnificent beings as equals. It's the first time in known history where a species deserving of such treatment was found. And when the translated transmission leaked out, all hell broke loose. Millions volunteered to be a part of such an endeavour. Ships from the most respected dockyards were donated, and military vessels from the most secretive labs were drafted. Veterans poured into the capital, demanding that they be a part of the project. They wanted to make sure no one harmed, possibly, the only species willing to befriend them. And wherever you went, you would most certainly hear music from the Blue Marble. The only thing on people's minds was the expedition. And when it finally arrived, all was an understatement. Those that were the metaphorical beacon for our civilization for the past months also turned out to be an actual one. Their set is flooded with cool blue and warm yellow lights, illuminated as much with their artificial creations as with their astonishing minds and kindness. Every soul in the flotilla clung to the viewports, from the harshest of commanders and generals to children, fascinated by, seemingly, the only species that would play with them, hopefully soon. The news channels have gone crazy. For the past few days, there have been non-stop reports of unknown objects heading for Earth. And now, of all things, every possible media was filled with a single phrase. Do not be afraid. We come in peace for all mankind. 